Well, welcome to the eighth stage of this series of European journeys in which we follow the footsteps of the Apostle Paul in Italy. Last week, we began to visit the city of Rome. That was the location that Paul had to reach in his journey. And so this week we stay in Rome, but this time we are going to visit the Roman Rione, that's a district of Campitelli. And Campitelli is located just a little bit more than a kilometer from the church of San Paolo alla Regola, where we were last week. And um, it is famous for the ruins of the Fori Imperiali, as we say in Italian, that is Roman forums, but also for its numerous churches. Well, back in the first century, some of the most important pagan temples of the Roman Empire were located right here in the Roman forums. And in the 60s, uh, after the birth of Christ, of course, that was a decade when Paul uh, was believed to be in Rome, none of the churches we find today in Campitelli were there yet, while the forums and the temples in the forums were still thriving. Well, in an era when the pagan gods were believed to be fundamental for the Roman Empire to stand, we can easily imagine how Paul realized the level of spiritual darkness that was reigning in the city. And the location we will visit today actually will help us understand even better the reality that Paul had to face. So we're going to start our walk from the massive monument called Vittoriano, and from there there is a narrow pedestrian road, which is called Clivio Argentario, and which is still made of ancient Roman pavements. Well, that uh, narrow road, that uh, pedestrian road, leads us to a small square. And that square is surrounded by two churches. On the left-hand side, we find the church called Chiesa Santi Luca e Martina Martiri. So it's a church dedicated to uh, the martyrs Luke and Martina. And on the right-hand side, there is a church called Chiesa San Giuseppe dei Falegnami. That is the church of St. Joseph of the Carpenters. And the location we will visit is actually located just under this church of St. Joseph. And it is actually nothing else but the historical Roman prison called Mamertinus, or Mamertine in English. So the Mamertine prison is a large circular gloomy cell in which several famous prisoners of antiquity were thrown into, often before being executed. Well, today, thankfully, prisoners are not sent here anymore. And instead, what we find is many tourists and also pilgrims, because it was indeed here that Paul was jailed before his own execution. And today we can find in the cell an altar and the column next to it. Well, this is because the Roman Catholic tradition believes that not only Paul was jailed here, but also Peter and both had been attached as prisoners on this column, one on the left and the other one on the right. That's for the Roman Catholic tradition. Well, as we have seen in our last stage of this series, Luke's biblical records of Paul's journey to Rome finish with the apostle living in a rented house in Rome for two years. But after that, Luke remains silent. And so as we visit this Mamertine prison, there are two questions that come naturally to us. Firstly, how do we know that Paul was a prisoner here? How can we know that? Well, even though Luke does not mention anything about a confinement here, it is through Paul's last letters, which are known to be the prison epistles, that we discover what kind of confinement he was now entangled in. In the last of his letters, which is the second epistle to Timothy, Paul mentions that he had already defended himself before the emperor. And if you remember, that was the reason why Paul had to travel to Rome to uh, appear before the emperor in trial. And so now he was confined here as a criminal. And he wrote, and I quote, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound, end quote. Well, why some of his earlier writings indicate that he was hoping to be soon released 
In this episode, poor now did not expect anything else but martyrdom. And this appears very clearly in one of his most famous quotes, which I quote now. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. End quote. Well, in ancient Rome, only the Mamertine prison corresponded to Paul's description of the kind of confinement in which he was now. And so it is widely accepted that this was the place where Paul was jailed as he awaited his execution. So the answer to the first question enjoys a large consensus both among theologians and historians. However, the second question remains a source of much debate among scholars to this day. And here it is. When exactly was Paul jailed here at the Mamertine? Had he first been released from custody in his rented house, and left Rome for another series of mission trips? Or was he rather directly transferred from the rented house to the Mamertine prison? Well, these are in fact the two main views that are still in contention today. So we will explore a little bit now what some of the most prominent historians had said about it. And two of the most prominent church historians of the 19th century were the Roman Catholic Johann Baptist Alzog and the Protestant Philip Schaff. Alzog held the view that Paul had been freed from his house of arrest and went to several mission trips before returning to Rome. However, Schaff believed that it was most probable that Paul did never leave Rome before his imprisonment here. Well, Alzog backed his views mainly on an epistle to the Church of Corinth written by Clement, the first century bishop of Rome, who was a young man when Paul arrived in the city. Having written that Paul went to the far west, Alzog understood that the place at the far west from Rome was none other than Spain. Schaff, however, noticed that such an interpretation was not coherent with other sources. And moreover, it rendered the timing of events relatively difficult. So even though the question is not entirely settled today, Philip Schaff's views that Paul had never been freed from his first custody seems most likely to be true. Well, finally, let us talk a little bit about the column that we find in the cell. The column is set as a reminder of Paul and Peter being both in chain at the same time in this prison. Well, it is not the scope of this stage to discuss whether this truly happened or not. Nevertheless, it remains certain that the spread of the gospel in Roman times often came at the price of the blood of those who proclaimed it, and both Paul and Peter were clearly among such martyrs. And this reminds us what the North African church father, Tertullian, famously said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Today, the Rione Campitelli is yet another testimony of the spiritual transformation that Rome underwent in the early centuries. While the pagan temples lie in ruin, many churches have since been built here. And more strikingly still, the Chiesa San Giuseppe dei Falegnami, standing just on top of the Mamertine prison, is a powerful symbol of how the gospel has triumphed over the might of pagan Rome. Now, this is not to say that uh, everything was perfect in the transformation of Rome, but nevertheless, this remained still a powerful symbol. And this is also a reminder that the gospel will ultimately triumph over all forms of false religions that set themselves against God. I'm Cedric Placentino. See you next week for another stage of European Journeys. <laughs>